I'm at the Military Women's Memorial, located at the ceremonial gateway to Arlington National Cemetery. We are the only national memorial dedicated to telling the stories of America's service women from all eras and all military services. Today, we're taking a closer look at one of those stories. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept. Those who came before us made certain that this country rode the first waves of the Industrial Revolution, the first waves of modern invention, and the first wave of nuclear power. And this generation does not intend to founder in the backwash of the coming age of space. We mean to be a part of it. We mean to lead it. We set sail on this new sea because there is new knowledge to be gained and new rights to be won. And they must be won and used for the progress of all people. It was the 1960s and the space race was underway. President John F. Kennedy vowed that the United States would go to the moon by the end of the decade, determined to beat the Soviet Union in space exploration and innovation. NASA created various space programs, Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo, all aimed toward landing the first man on the moon. NASA sought the best candidates to become America's first astronauts and believed that they all should be military test pilots. At the time, that excluded women. Still, women found ways to contribute to the space race. Air Force Colonel Pearl Tucker saw a need for nurses to specialize in space-related medicine to render care to astronauts and those living and working near space launches. Tucker oversaw a two-year training course in aerospace nursing. In her proposal for the course, she imagined the hazards of spaceflight, including the very real threat of a failed rocket launch. She described the disaster that could follow. While still making its ascent, the rocket explodes. There is flaming wreckage, brush fires are everywhere, and people below are suffering from rocket fuel burns. That, Tucker argued, was why aerospace nurses were needed. The women who completed the aerospace nursing course went through a lot of the same training as astronauts so that they could understand space flight and the medical needs that could arise. The nurses experienced zero-G flights, practiced using emergency showers to prevent rocket fuel burns, and wore spacesuits to understand the most efficient and safest ways to get to astronauts to provide medical care. The nurses also prepared to assist astronauts as soon as they returned to Earth, training in the use of helicopters and amphibious vehicles to quickly reach capsules that landed in the ocean. The aerospace nurses experienced firsthand the dangers of pioneering spaceflight. After the Apollo 1 disaster in 1967, in which all three astronauts were tragically killed when a fire engulfed the command module during a training exercise, the nurses assisted with the autopsies. They were meant to provide support in case of any medical emergencies. Aerospace nurses expected one day to provide medical care from space, envisioning an orbital space hospital and spaceship ambulances in the future. However, manned launches were so expensive that the space program was curtailed. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. I'm gonna step off the limb now. That's one small step for man. One 
Neil Armstrong uttered those famous words when he took the first steps on the surface of the moon in 1969, a culmination of more than a decade of scientific ingenuity. By that point, Tucker and the aerospace nurses had taken one small step for women, laying the groundwork for women to have increasingly integral roles in space exploration. There are still aerospace nurses today. As NASA looks to resume manned missions to the moon and ultimately to Mars, perhaps these nurses will play a larger role in years to come. To learn more stories of women past and present who serve our nation, visit www.womensmemorial.org. Tune in for our next Her Story Spotlight.